Wednesday morning on Lessons in Advanced Perception, which happens to be the first uh, ebook A&P Electronic Media ever published on eMediaPress.com years ago. She was uh, Harold Schroppel's um, youngest student ever. And as uh, she mentioned, it's the most uh, important set of lessons she's ever learned uh, in her life. And it has been very instrumental in a lot of the work that she does um, all the way up into the recent times. Um, her passion is children. And as a psychologist, um, uh, she has done a lot of work with uh, brainwave um, entrainment and modification, which is the subject of this, which is one of my favorite subjects. Um, I've been using brainwave entrainment technology for uh, decades, have produced my own audios to entrain the brainwaves, and, and uh, when I had a chance to learn more about what she does and found out about these machines, I had a chance to try them out myself. There's a several different variations of it. Um, you're going to learn about one, which is the most clinically proven brainwave entrainment device on the market anywhere today. Clinically proven, typically, you know, one of the examples is that when uh, whatever IQ somebody has, it's conventionally thought that that IQ pretty much kind of stays the same throughout someone's life. But um, with the type of work that uh, Dr. Olmsted has been involved with and clinically proving this in children, that they've actually been able to significantly raise the IQ using her protocols. And some of the top devices in the market actually use the protocols that she has developed recorded on those devices. Paul Babcock, I let him uh, borrow one of the devices. His uh, wife instantly seized that from him and uh, has been using it religiously every day. They have both been uh, getting astounding results. And more recently with one of the devices, a new model came out. I had to take the memory card out. And when Paul told his wife that uh, I had to take that, she almost kicked him out of the house. <laughs> so I finally got it back. They had to use that to record to put on the, the new devices, and so everything is kind of upgraded. We'll talk about that a little bit at the end. Um, there's just a handful available. We'll go over the details at the end of the presentation. But uh, please help me welcome Dr. Ruth Olmsted. You. Am I, am I mic'd? Am I mic'd? Okay, I want to apologize for my voice, and I want to thank uh, a number of people in the audience for uh, helping me out a little bit with this. Vitamin C, all these other wonderful uh, little miracles. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to uh, talk as clearly as possible. This is my favorite topic. This, uh, this equipment has changed my life. I think if you guys remember, I was an artist. I think I discussed this uh, on Wednesday. And uh, as an artist, I was interested in what people were seeing when they were undergoing this light stimulus. And uh, I'm just gonna get one going for you now. So I heard about this type of technology when uh, California, I love California for that reason, they always come up with the greatest, newest, latest stuff sometimes. But people were going for weekend retreats just for brain expansion, brain expansion. They were about, the devices were about the size of this computer. They were manual. You could manually set the frequency that you wanted your brain waves to entrain to. And uh, the light, the sound, everything was manually done then. So I thought, you know, I've got a great sense, sense of a right brain, but my left brain, eh, not so much. So for about $4,000, I went and bought myself a device that I had never tried. I'd only heard about it. And I couldn't stand it. I did not like the way it was being manipulated. I felt spacey. I felt as though I was dizzy. And I thought, no, there's a better way. Somebody has to have a protocol, you know, for how to work this thing. Because as a child and an adult who has an attention deficit issue, I need a pattern. I need something to start at a certain place, and I need to know where it's going to end. And so what you end up doing is you're giving that brain way more of an ability, just like working out in the gym, you're building, you're building tissue, you're building muscle, right? 
so they were able to handle way more stress. And so in doing so, that stress response didn't appear, right? Those migraines went down. Anxiety and depression, fantastic, fantastic. With anxiety, I start people at a very high frequency. I match the frequency that we're, you know, basically that we're all in now. And then you bring that, you bring that frequency down slower and slower and slower. So the brainwave activity learns to calm down, even though they're getting inundated with a lot of stimulus, right? So I would say that the most successful uh, disorders that I have intervened with were, of course, migraine, epilepsy. It's not something I would do now, but back then, I was a little over, you know, a little overconfident. Um, but the woman that I was working with had far less seizures because she didn't have a stress response that would induce them. So, chronic pain, it just relaxes everything, which allows the blood and oxygen to flow to those damaged areas. Agoraphobia we talked about, insomnia, bipolar. This is interesting. So. In the next slide, I'm going to get into the two type of programs that I've designed. One's inhibitory and one is excitatory. According to the National Center for Education, you will not believe that 7.1 million kids are in special ed in this country. 7.1 million. That's a lot. And you know what also goes along with that? Low self-esteem. I hate school. I'm a failure. I'm angry. Now I've got behavioral problems. I'm defiant, right? So this can kind of spiral out of control. I really, this is why I really love to focus on children. Because if you can change a kid's life, you know, when they're younger, you change the whole trajectory of their life and what they're capable of. So basically learning, you know, disabilities are just sort of, you know, cognitive, you know, it's executive function disorder related to the frontal lobe. But um, thinking, planning, self-control, memory organization. So what I decided to do was I took 30 children, ages 6 to 16, who were, they had either diagnosis. They were ADHD, LD, but they all had to score below average on what I think is one of the most reliable and valid intelligence tests in the country, maybe the world, you know, the Wexler Intelligence Scale for Children super high reliability and validity rate. It's a very good test. It's very expensive to administer. I, had, I administered only four tests. I administered a test for memory, arithmetic, and then one that related to reading and one that related to uh, processing speed. So uh, every kid, in order to qualify, had to fall below average on those tests. So. I actually got two extra scores. I got a freedom from distractibility score from that, which is, you know, maybe how well they focus and concentrate, and then a processing speed. What was amazing to me is those two scores jumped like crazy. They jumped faster than any other score. So these are my little angels, two of them anyway. Angels some days, monsters another, but anyway. Uh, so this was like a, you know, they, they actually really loved it. This was a quasi-experimental, and I didn't have a, a control group. Who's got time for that? I wanted to graduate. But um, so what I did with these kids, they came in, they had two sessions, two sessions a week, two 35-minute sessions. That's all. That's all. They got tested before. In six weeks, these kids all significantly approved across the board in every single test. It's one of two ways it's gonna go. You either use an excitatory, it's kinda of like that motor that's kinda of chugging along, and all of a sudden it gets enough speed that it just smooths out. Or that erratic brainwave activity that you have to calm down so it falls into a normal rhythm. That's why that's a tough one. I have to personally um, see that patient and decide for myself if I think I'm gonna have you know, a chance with that. But we're always able to cut down medication, which is always good. This device is so inexpensive. It's, it's a little, like the size of those old transistor radios. You just turn it on, you pick your program. I'm gonna show you what 13 hertz looks like on here. 
Okay, so this will count down. You could, even, you could even build your own sessions on here, which I kind of don't recommend, unless you know what you're doing. But, <clears throat> okay. You have ADHD adult, ADHD kid, Alzheimer beginning, advanced. Thank you.